Hey guys, YouTube Captain Machine here back for another video, and this one's going to be fairly. I'm going to try and keep it short, but that's not going to happen because this is a rant video. And people have asked me since my last video, I said I didn't like 40k anymore. Why did I turn away from the Emperor's Light? That's the question they posed it, and it almost sounds like a religious thing, you know. Basically, Games Workshop as a company have done an awful lot to pee me off. It really has done, as to, as has its subsidiaries as well. And it's other licensees. So let's count the ways, shall we? Um, I'm more than a 40k player than I'm a Warhammer player. I tried to get into Warhammer Fantasy Battles and I couldn't bring myself to do it. One day I might buy an army. I'm going to buy the darn thing pre paint because I ain't sitting down and painting identical models over and over and over again. I'm not doing it. I thought I can't do it. I mean, it's a case of my, I don't have the patience for it. I like individual models, and that's why I prefer skirmish games to um, mass army games. I suppose maybe my taste might change over the years, but for the time being, I just can't bring myself to paint like 40 plus Chaos Warriors and 80 plus Chaos Marauders, which is what I tried to do when I bought a, kit, a Warhammer army. Um, but the, the new editions come out, and it's a good edition, it's not bad. It, in terms of how it compares to say fifth, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that good a game. It just isn't. Um, the rules are not concise. There's absolute ton of um, plot holes in it. Not plot holes. Real you know, rules, lawyers, holes, whatever. You know, there's, there's, the rules are not concise. They don't work one hundred percent of the time. It's you still get debates on forums. You still get things about how various different rules works. Like I, I watched a video recently about the air defence guns, where apparently if you can drop your model I think, next to it, uh, even if it's the enemy's gun and he's got in his own deployment zone, he's got guys next to it, he can still fire the damn things and shoot his own planes down with it. And it's like, really? Okay, uh, that's, a, that's, a bit of a, that's a bit of a loophole. Um, I don't think that's in, I don't think that's as intended at all. But I don't think I think the Games Workshop are a model company more than say any other company, and they just happen to write a set of rules around their their models, and their rules aren't that good. And they need they need to employ technical writers, which they don't do, and they need to employ a batch of play testers, which they don't do, and that's inexcusable in this day and age. I mean, when Privateer Press, for example, did version 2 they got an absolute ton of play testers to grind the crap out of that rule system so they could not work out the kinks out of it so that you rarely encounter a situation where it's like you can't do that you you know two people arguing about how the rules are interpreted because it's usually quite clear and concise when Battletech which has been around forever right has a rule so that, that I've never seen anyone argue over ever I mean the only time anyone's ever argued over a rule in Battletech is because they didn't understand the rules in the first place and when you sit them down, you read the you know the paragraph or the sentence or the chapter that relates to what they're talking about. Generally speaking, they understand that they've made a misunderstanding and they can get on with the game and have fun with it. And there's all all other kinds of games out there that are like that. And I don't know, maybe maybe just tournament play is not what I want. I don't want tournament play anymore. Maybe maybe I just like the idea of playing smaller games with my friends and my family. And, you know, just having some fun with it. Also, there's the, the the cost issue as well. I mean, I've sold, recently sold my Orc on because I got bored of the Orcs. And I hadn't had time to play for a while, so I thought I might as well get rid of them anyway. And free up some my capital and my space as well for something else. So, I don't think I can afford any war game stuff this year at all. If I'm honest with myself. But next year I can do. Next year everything will be sorted out financially wise. And I'll be in a much better place. And I'll be able to. Not moving wise. I mean like financially wise speaking. And I'll be able to afford more stuff. And it might be a bit more akin to what it used to be back in the day. Although my priorities as an individual have changed radically over the last year or so. But. I'll be looking at workshop games again. Because like for example the Tau model. New, new Tau. Tau model, for example, really interested me. 
But then I start thinking to myself, and can I really afford this? And if I can, would I want to? Like, for example, if I wanted to start a new 40k army or a new Warhammer army, I'm looking at two to three hundred pounds easy, right? Okay. Maybe a bit more than that, depending on which army I pick. And definitely more than that if I intend to have it commissioned. So I paint so get someone to paint it for me. Do you know what else I can buy for four for four hundred pounds? An iPad. A new console. Uh a new TV. <laughs> and it's like and you suddenly realise how expensive this stuff gets. And there are other companies out there that do other games which require less models, which means less painting for me because I'm not a big painter of the world. Um less financial investment and just as much if not more fun. So the war game doesn't do it for me. Then there's the fiction. I've been trying to catch up with the Horace Heresy stuff, but I hit Descent of Angels and it's ground me to a halt. Now I want to finish that before I carry on, but it's proven to be hard to find the old books because the bookshops just don't stock them anymore. So I'm to, I'll have, probably have to go to Games Workshop Direct to buy them. Which is kind of like annoying. But the new stuff they're bringing out in hardback. Like, for example, I'm, I'm sorry, just kick the mic there. I'm a huge fan of Kyphus Kane, Sandy Peterson. I'm a huge fan of the Inquisitor stuff that Dan Abner had done. Uh, I want to get into Dan Abnett's um, Gaunt's Ghost stuff as well. And the Horus Heresy as well. Get into that too. But. The, the stuff that's truly popular, the stuff they know that's going to sell, they're releasing in hardback. And they're charging a lot of money for it. Uh, and it's a case of, there has to be a higher product, I'm assuming there's a higher profit margin on that. Can you see me right? Yeah. I'm assuming there's a higher profit margin on doing it that way. And that's why they can get away with charging more money. And I thought to myself, well, I don't want to pay a for hardback, but maybe I can buy it as an ebook because I got an iPad. I can view ebooks. And I can make it so that this will be the first ever ebook I buy, which was I think it was like the new Kyphus Kane novel. And it was a case of they wanted twelve pound for an ebook. It's a couple of quid cheaper than it was in hardback. And it was like, you've got to be kidding me. You can't do that. You can't charge someone 12 quid for an e-book and expect anyone to buy it. Um, and then eventually the book comes out in paperback and I see it in the shop and I just don't care anymore. Uh, I want to get back into reading fiction, but maybe I should just read something else. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. So as you can hear, I'm a bit depressed with the whole thing. And then there's the RPG. Now, I didn't like 3rd edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. I didn't even play it, to be fair. didn't give it the chance it deserved. But then again, I wasn't going to invest, what, 60 to £80 pound on a box set that I might not use. And it's also the same reason why I don't think I'm going to be touching the new Star Wars until someone play, runs it for me. Because those funky dice things, I don't see the point in them, I really don't. Um, so, second edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, really good game, really enjoyed it, but it's a shame that it didn't continue following it, and I don't want to run it anymore. Uh, I'll play it, and I've kept all my core rule books for playing it, but all the stuff that you need to run the game, gone. Um, and the Warhammer 40,000 game, and I will probably talk about this in more depth than actual proper video, has just got old so quick. The game's clunky, really clunky. And you can see that it's not built from the ground up to be its own game. It's built from the ground up to be a bolt-on to the already pre-existing fantasy system. Um, the fact is that the new stuff that's coming out, like um, Black Crusade and Only War... Is well better written, uh, much better written. Sorry, in terms of how it character created and how you level up a character and so forth, compared to how the older books like Dark Heresy are. So Dark Heresy is in dire need of a second edition, and I don't see any plans to do it anytime soon. But it needs one. It needs one bad. 
And then, and then it's just how the mechanics work. Like the idea that as a starting character, you're lucky. You're really lucky if you get your stats high enough that you'll pass most of your tests fifty percent of the time. And I don't know if you like me or it's a game design issue, but the idea that I would only be able to succeed in a task fifty percent of the time is not fun. And in a lot of cases for starting characters, it's lower than that, much lower than that, somewhere like thirty percent of the time. So yeah, overall, falling out of love with the the tabletop because it costs too much money and the rules are crap, or they're not cons- not not tight enough. I fall out of love with the novels because of the business practice behind that, and I've then I've fallen out of love with the RPG because there's better ways of doing it. So there we go. Thanks for your time, guys. Bye.